the controllers had moved too quickly and revealed their hand. Populations around the globe were seeing through the establishment's facade, past the puppet governments, and to the global architects that were pulling their strings. Where are the American people? Why have they lost their dignity? What is stopping them from speaking out? Why have they become little mice that follow Pied Pipers? How can they look up to these pathetic politicians? Go sit down. I have a question for this young man. He has the right to be represented. I'm his father and I want to talk to you face to face. Why not a lobbyist with all kind of money to stuff in your pocket so that you can cheat the, the pit citizens of this country? So I'll leave and you can do whatever the hell you please to do. One day God's going to stand before you and he's going to judge you and the rest of your damn cronies up on the hill. And then... You will get your just desserts. As the public begins to awaken to the fact that Barack Obama has cold-bloodedly betrayed the pledges he made to the American people, the establishment media and Democratic leaders have invoked the tactic of divide and conquer. I think they're astroturfed. Uh, oh, you be the judge of carrying swastikas and symbols like that to a, a town meeting on health care. An overwhelming portion of the intensely demonstrated animosity toward President Barack Obama is based on the fact that he is a black man. Desperate to ram their agenda through, they have played the race and class cards. You start to wonder whether in fact the word socialist is becoming a code word, whether or not socialist is becoming the new n-word. When I hear people going after the first lady and the number right. of staff people they have, it sounds racist to me. It is essential that the establishment play the population off against each other, along the lines of Republican Democrat, liberal conservative, black and white. As long as the people are fighting with each other, they can never get together and remove the corporate dictatorship that has criminally seized power through the national security state. Just as George W. Bush betrayed his foolish followers, so must Obama, because his only allegiance is to his offshore masters. President Obama today nominated Ben Bernanke for a second four-year term as Federal Reserve Chairman. The president called his actions on the global financial crisis bold and out of the box. As an expert on the causes of the Great Depression, I'm sure Ben never imagined that he would be part of a team responsible for preventing another. But because of his background, his temperament, his courage, and his creativity, that's exactly what he has helped to, to achieve. And that is why I am reappointing him to another term as chairman of the Federal Reserve. So Obama has made it quite clear by his actions, never mind his words, his actions as to who owns him, who, who he works for, and who he serves, and it's not the American people. It is so obvious to anyone paying attention that the President of the United States is not the real person in control whether it is Gerald Ford or Jimmy Carter or Ronald Reagan or, or Clinton or Bush or Bush, Obama is no different. And to think that he is an independent figure is just crazy. And as Franklin Delano Roosevelt said, presidents are selected, they are not elected. Obama pledged that he would end NAFTA and GATT and has since fought to expand both of them. Obama promised that he would have the most transparent administration ever, and he is already more secretive than Bush and Cheney ever were, even making it a secret who visits the White House. I can make a firm pledge. If your family earns less than $250,000 a year, if you make less than a quarter million dollars a year, if you are a family making two, less than $250,000 a year, you will not see your taxes increased a single dime. You will not see your taxes go up. You will not see your taxes increase one single dime. Not your capital gains tax, not your payroll tax, not your income tax, no tax. Not your income tax, not your payroll tax, 
not your capital gains taxes, not any of your taxes. Not your payroll tax, not your capital gains tax, not your income tax, no tax. Your taxes will not go up because the last thing you need is higher taxes when we're in a recession like this and you won't get one under an Obama administration. Obama made the centerpiece of his campaign the pledge that taxes would not be raised on anyone making under $125,000 a year. He has since gone back on that promise as well and has proposed new taxes on payroll, energy, home mortgage deductions, and scores of other taxes. He made a pledge. He said, I'm not going to raise taxes on anyone making under $250,000. Mm -hmm. Is that pledge still active? Uh, we are going to let the process work its way through it. So it's not. So it's not. So it's not. We're going to let the process <laughs> work its way through. All right. The Senate uh, is looking, especially at this issue of, of capping the deductions uh, for, for health care that employers and employees uh, now get. That would, <coughs> it would be an incre tax increase for many families earning under $250,000. But the president said he was open to it. So that means that the tax pledge he made back in September is no longer operative? Obama said he was going to abolish the Patriot Act. He now vigorously defends it. We saw the same type of flip-flop when it came to warrantless wiretapping of the American people. Look what Obama's done with wiretapping, surveillance. He's brought it to heights even beyond what George Bush, the disgusting levels that he brought it to. So we have more surveillance. Now they're talking about what is it called? Cybercom, the new Pentagon secret cyber society that's going to be watching over us to get those terrorists. We got to get those terrorists. So now they'll be invading our privacy even more. So, I mean, it really, it really almost makes you ask the question would it have been better if we never invented the internet? and had to use paper and pencil or whatever. Now Obama is setting up the Cybersecurity Command, which the government admits completely ends the Fourth Amendment and allows President Obama to shut off the Internet in the United States whenever he wishes. Indeed, in today's world, acts of terror could come not only from a few extremists in suicide vests, but from a few keystrokes on the computer, a weapon of mass disruption. As part of the new single national security staff announced this week, I'm creating a new office here at the White House that will be led by the cybersecurity coordinator. This new control grid is administered by the Pentagon. They just want to keep tabs on us. So we're turning in to a surveillance wiretap government state. The government is taking more and more control over our lives. I can stand here today as President of the United States and say without exception or equivocation that we do not torture. Obama made a show of investigating torture, but has ignored the Army's own detailed investigative reports, which name the tortures that the White House memos document were following the directives of Bush and Cheney, the men who are most guilty for issuing the infamous orders. Some low-level soldiers have been prosecuted for their role at Abu Ghraib, but no senior officer has been held accountable in any of these cases to date. Heidi? I know that these debates lead directly, in some cases, to a call for a fuller accounting, perhaps through an independent commission. Now, I've opposed the creation of such a commission. Next, Obama expanded Bush's doctrine of indefinite detention of foreigners without trial to holding citizens without evidence indefinitely, without ever even committing a crime. President Obama today proposed something new, something called prolonged detention. Pre-crime is where people are arrested and incarcerated to prevent crimes that they have not yet committed. Barack H. Obama, who ran as an anti-war candidate, has continued the war in Iraq, massively expanded the war in Afghanistan, and unleashed a new conflict in Pakistan. Now Obama is promoting the biggest defense budget in history, dwarfing George Bush's war machine. What George Bush has been trying to do as part of his effort to accumulate more power in the presidency is he's been saying, well, I can basically change what Congress passed by attaching a letter saying, I don't agree with this part or I don't agree with that part. I'm going to choose to interpret it this way or that way. Uh, that's not part of his power. But this is part of the whole theory of George Bush that he can make laws as he's going along. 
Uh, I disagree with that. I taught the Constitution for 10 years. I believe in the Constitution, and I will obey the Constitution of the United States. We're not going to use signing statements as a way of doing an end run around Congress. All right? Obama guaranteed that once president, he would stop the unconstitutional practice of issuing signing statements through which the executive branch illegally usurps the legislative power of Congress. Congressman Kucinich, when he introduced his uh, 60 uh, uh, articles of impeachment against Bush uh, Jr., I think one was the signing statements. The form of the resolution is as follows. A resolution, articles of impeachment, of George Bush, President of the United States, resolved that President George W. Bush be impeached for high crimes and misdemeanors 